In this video, we will explore the history and characteristics of knights in both France and England during the Middle Ages. We will examine the way they were trained, the code of chivalry that they followed, and the role they played in society. By the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of the unique qualities that distinguished French and English knights from one another. So sit back, relax, and join us as we delve into the fascinating world of medieval knights. In medieval Europe, knights were an important part of the social and military structure of many countries, England and France, being two of the most powerful and influential countries of the time had their own unique traditions and practices when it came to knighthood. One of the main differences between English knights and French knights was their training and education. English knights were often trained from a young age in the art of combat, as well as in chivalry and courtly manners. This training often took place in a knight's household, where he would be taught by a variety of skilled instructors, including his own father or other male relatives, who were themselves knights. The education of English knights also included physical training, such as riding, hunting, and jousting, as well as lessons in leadership, strategy, and diplomacy. The Statutes of the Order of the Garter, written in the 14th century, is a document that outlines the rules and regulations governing the prestigious chivalric order in England. According to the statutes, Knights of the Order were expected to exhibit the highest levels of courage, honor, and chivalry on and off the battlefield. They were also required to be proficient in the use of weapons, including the sword, lance, and shield. In addition to their military training, Knights of the Order were also expected to uphold the code of chivalry and to demonstrate their commitment to the ideals of honor, duty, and service. This included participating in religious ceremonies showing respect to those of high rank, and defending the weak and the oppressed. Overall, the training of an English knight within the Order of the Garter was designed to produce courageous and honorable warriors who were ready to serve their lord and country with distinction. French knights, on the other hand, received a more formal education with a focus on literature, music, and the arts. This education was typically provided by a tutor or teacher and took place in a more structured setting, such as a castle or palace. French knights were also expected to be well-versed in the traditions and customs of the court, and to be able to participate in the elaborate ceremonies and rituals that were an important part of courtly life. One primary source that describes the training of an English knight in the 1300s is the Book of Chivalry by Geoffroy Charney. In this treatise, Charney outlines the steps that a young knight should follow in order to become a fully-fledged member of the warrior class. According to Charney, the training of a French knight began at a young age and was focused on developing both physical and moral strength. Physical training included exercises such as jousting, sword fighting, and horsemanship. Knights were also expected to maintain their physical fitness through regular exercise and training. In addition to physical training, knights were also expected to uphold a code of chivalry and to cultivate virtues such as courage, honor, and loyalty. This was accomplished through training in manners, etiquette, and the arts, as well as through participation in religious ceremonies and the study of moral and ethical texts. Another difference between English and French knights was the way in which they were recruited and inducted into knighthood. In England, knights were often the sons of nobles, who inherited their titles and positions. This was known as the system of primogeniture, where the firstborn son of a noble inherited all of his father's titles and lands. As a result, the ranks of English knights were often filled with the sons of noble families, who were expected to follow in their father's footsteps and become knights themselves. In France, on the other hand, knights were usually commoners who earned their titles through military service or through other notable deeds. This was known as the system of meritocracy, where knights were chosen based on their ability and merit, rather than their birthright. French knights were often recruited from the ranks of the common people and were chosen for their bravery, skill, and loyalty. When it came to the way they fought, English and French knights also had some differences. 
English knights were known for their heavy armor and weapons, and their emphasis on hand-to-hand -hand combat. They favored a more direct and aggressive style of fighting, and were often used to lead charges and break through enemy lines. French knights, on the other hand, favored a more agile and flexible approach, with a focus on speed and mobility. They were known for their finesse and skill with weapons, and often relied on tactics such as surprise attacks and flanking maneuvers to defeat their opponents. Despite these differences, both English and French knights were highly respected and admired for their bravery, honor, and loyalty. They played a crucial role in the defense and protection of their respective countries, and their code of chivalry helped to shape the values and ideals of medieval society. English knights were often seen as more pragmatic and straightforward, while French knights were known for their refinement and sophistication. English and French knights fought each other many times, but today we will tell the story of the Battle of Crecy. It was a hot summer day in 1346, and the fields of Crecy, in northern France, were alive with the sound of clashing steel and the shouts of men. On one side of the battlefield stood the English army, led by King Edward III, a young and ambitious monarch determined to defend his kingdom and assert his authority. On the other side stood the French army, led by King Philip VI, a powerful and experienced warrior who had spent years preparing for this moment. The English had brought with them a new and formidable weapon, the longbow, which had proven to be highly effective in previous conflicts. The English men-at-arms dismounted, choosing to fight on foot. The French, on the other hand, relied on the more traditional weapons of knights, such as lances, swords, and shields. They chose to remain mounted, and while the French knights' armor offered some protection, their horses were unarmored. As the battle began, the French launched a fierce cavalry charge against the English lines, hoping to break through and scatter their opponents. But the English were ready for them. As the French knights charged forward, the English archers unleashed a deadly hail of arrows, sending a cloud of deadly projectiles hurtling towards the enemy. The longbows were powerful and accurate, and the arrows flew through the air with incredible speed and force. The French knights were caught off guard by the ferocity of the attack, and many of them fell before they even reached the English lines. Those who managed to make it through the arrow storm were met with a wall of shields and a forest of spear points, as the English foot soldiers stood their ground and fought with fierce determination. Despite their superior numbers and their reputation as the finest knights in Europe, the French were no match for the English. The battle raged on for hours, with both sides suffering heavy casualties, but in the end, it was the English who emerged victorious. The French army was decimated, and King Philip VI was forced to retreat, leaving the English in control of the field. The Battle of Crecy was a turning point in the Hundred Years' War, and marked the beginning of a long and difficult conflict between England and France. It was a testament to the bravery and skill of the English knights and soldiers who fought with valor and determination against a formidable foe. And it was a lesson to the French who learned the hard way that the English were not to be underestimated on the battlefield. Thank you for listening to our latest video. We hope you found it enjoyable. As always, like and subscribe. Let us know how we can improve in the comments.